We are following breaking news out of El Cajon this morning where one person sadly was killed in a house fire. Glad you're with us at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Connard. And I'm Netta Irampour. Thank you so much for joining us. I mean, take a look at this. This happened overnight in the 1700 block of North 1st Street. CBS 8's Regina Yurita live at the scene right now with everything we know. Good morning, Regina. Yeah, good morning, Netta and Eric. Look, we are closer to the house right in front of it, so I actually want to pan to it to show you kind of the damage that this fire left. You can see right there the entrance, uh, just all the damage from that fire uh, completely charred in, in, towards that entrance. Right now inside it's uninhabitable and three people have been displaced. But the call actually came in at 1 a.m. Firefighters were called on scene for a structure fire and a possible person trapped inside. Uh, you can see all those flames coming out of that house. When they arrived on scene, they searched the entire structure and found a female victim. So as far as right now, what we know, that person unfortunately died on scene. Uh, but a separate family member of the people who live in that house says as far as he knows only three people live there. He seemed a bit confused when we asked him who the victim could be. A bomb, bomb arson squad were actually here conducting an investigation and we're still trying to determine the cause of the fire. So according to what the property owner's son told me, it's his mother, uh, his uh, sister-in-law and brother who are all okay. That fourth victim still trying to figure out who that is. Here's what he told us. It's my mom's house. She's 90 years old. And my brother, uh, my mom got out, my brother and my sister-in-law, I know they are out. So I, other than that, I don't know anything about this other. So I don't know how bad the house is burnt down. It just, uh, what I saw, I didn't see the flames. I just saw, I mean, I couldn't get close enough. So it was, uh, I was seeing smoke and, and the glow, but, uh, but I didn't know anything yet. And then I finally got a hold of my sister and my brother and they got out. And so that is the property owner's son uh, telling us uh, he doesn't live there, but um, his mom, a sister-in-law and brother live in this uh, house. Uh, they are currently displaced. We're still trying to get more details. What you're looking at right now is just some of the damage that this uh, structure fire caused to this house. It's uh, uninhabitable at the moment. Uh, as I just mentioned, right, three people displaced. We're trying to get more information right now. Crews have left the scene. They have cleared up, uh, no longer blocked off. This is on a first and Bradley here in El Cajon. As far as more details, we're still trying to get more information. As soon as we have that, of course, check back on CBS8.com and stick with CBS8. We'll be covering this all morning. Eric Anetta. Some wild weather in San Diego. This is hail in Santee yesterday. There was also some lightning there overnight. And here's a look at the snow in Pine Valley from our Jake Gariani. Moments ago, we got word about school closures because of the icy road conditions there. That includes Julian Union Elementary School District, Julian Union High School District, Spencer Valley School District, and Warner Powell uh, Unified School District. Right, Warner a Unified. snow day. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, this is a live look at Laguna Mountain Lodge. So as you see, obviously, Mount Laguna area, the snow is coming and sticking on the rooftop. Uh, some of the roads are icy, so just be warned. Uh, it is cold. It is below freezing, of course, and that's why a lot of this can ice right over. So as you see that rain snow line, that pink line right there, it's right below Pine Valley. So that's about 4,000 feet in elevation. Also, it's raining. You saw Regina had her umbrella out in El Cajon, in Santee, uh, parts of Tierra Santa. So it looks like the 52 uh, will be a little bit slick as well. Further south, also along our foothills, the rain's coming in and the snow in our mountains. And now in three hours, Mayor Todd Gloria is expected to announce a new program that he claims will speed up more housing construction. This all comes as home prices rise across the city and the county. But there is some good news to share here this morning. Mortgage rates dropped for the second week in a row. According to Freddie Mac, the average 30-year fixed mortgage rate, 6.74%. A 15-year fixed rate, 6.16%. Okay, so let's turn it over now to CBS 8's Chris Grow live in North Park, where the mayor is expected to announce his new housing program. Chris, what do you know about this? Yeah, good morning, Eric and Netta, and we've been diving into the, excuse me, the specifics here, and it does appear that this is trying to address the issue 
of uh, how many homes are simply in the city of San Diego trying to get them built, but also built quickly. And that's exactly uh, the issue that is currently facing some developers right now is that red tape makes it too hard to get things up and get them moving. So the main goal here from this program, which was put into place by executive action by the mayor's office, this is the complete communities program. So these housing projects that are submitted through the program will, and if they qualify, will be approved by various city departments in 30 days or less. So they're trying to cut down on the red tape. The program encourages more urban development, newer public trans, uh, excuse me, near public transportation and mobility parks. So they want this uh, for develop, developers who are encouraging this type of uh, projects and so forth to go ahead and apply for this under the assumption that they are going to be building their property in a place like where we are right now in North Park, South Park, other different types of urban areas. The theory is more homes being built on the market brings the cost down. However, this does come at a pretty dire time. A new Zillow study shows that the median income should be more than $273,000 for a household for a family to annually comfortably afford a typical home here in San Diego. For, so for those not making that amount, and are currently trying to buy a home in San Diego. How quickly will things get better? That's been the question here really for the past five, six, seven years right now. Simply when will uh, the rubber meet the road, so to speak? When will all of that hard work pay off? Of course, that still remains a question at this time. We are going to hear from the mayor at 9 a.m. Uh, and we will update this story with remarks and, of course, any further details we learn about this program. Eric Netta. Uh, something many people are hoping to get some help with. Thank you very much, Chris. Coming up later this hour, we will walk you through the steps to apply for the state's down payment assistance program, which does open up here in a few days. Thomas at the horn. No, and the Aztecs survive. The San Diego State men's basketball team beating UNLV in overtime in the Mountain West quarterfinal score was 74 to 71 last night. CBS 8's John Howard is in Las Vegas with reaction from players and a preview of today's semifinals. Good morning, San Diego. U-G-L-Y, it ain't got no alibi. It was ugly for the first half last night. The Aztecs and UNLV could not shoot well, but in the second half, the Aztecs did what the Aztecs do. They came back, they built a lead, they lost the lead, overtime was forced, and then in OT, they gritted it out and survived a last second shot by UNLV star player. The guys thrilled to be advancing or they will face Utah State tonight. Uh, how sweet is it to get the victory? I mean, it was just like a sigh of relief, uh, live for another day, go to the hotel, relax, uh, prepare for tomorrow. Uh, it was tough. It was tough. Mm -hmm. it, wasn't, it wasn't an easy one, but, but we gutted it out and got through and got, got the win. That's all that matters. Your thoughts on the second half and how frenetic it was? Uh, I thought it was good for the second half. You know, we brought a lot of energy. Uh, kind of preached just like, just be us, you know, go out there, have fun. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we built the lead. They cut it back, but mainly it was just like, let's get this win. Let's, let's, let's be us. We came here just wanting to be the tougher team and uh, just rebound hard. We know they got us nine days ago uh, in this same, same building, so it was like, we just wanted to get that get back for him. That's why I love this game so much. It's just a game of runs. Uh, there's no other sport really like this where you could you could be up 10 one play and next thing you know you're down five. I mean, yep. so you know, just kind of just being strong through those runs. Uh, I think that's one of our team's best parts is just how like mentally tough we are, which yep. allows us to go through those rough spouts where we may not be able to score and still yep. try to get defensive stops. Just another night in the Mountain West. Every game is like this. Every one. And it's not a surprise that this one went down to the wire. Trammell, it's turn three. It's March, so wins are going to be ugly. Uh, but it's all that matters is that we get the win, and, and now we get to focus on the next game. I, mean, I, I didn't think we did too bad starting the game. I mean, we, uh, we put an emphasis on it. You know, we got to start a little faster, just maybe having our blood and body going and just getting ready to go. But, I mean, I liked how we finished. So, I mean, that's, that's all that matters. So tonight's semifinal match should be a good one. Utah State won the regular season championship this year, taking that title away from the Aztecs. So the Aztecs should be motivated. The team split two games this year, each winning at home, now on a neutral court. It's the rubber match, 6.30 tonight on CBS Sports Network. In the land of Sin City and the city that never sleeps and the land of lights, John Howard, let's go back to you on set now. 
<laughs> yeah, lots of names Is for Las Vegas. Is he having a good time there or yes, what? Yes, <laughs> I hope we did actually get some sleep. He started uh, off with a cheer. Yes, <laughs> hey, March Madness is all about momentum, right? right so right. they've got the momentum going for them. And look at yeah. the... Uh, the madness here. What is this, Julian? Uh, this is Julian Main wow. Street right here. And look, I'm watching these cameras uh, because right here the car is now coated in <laughs> snow. The road does look slick, uh, not necessarily snow piling up by any means. Uh, you know, this is fairly light. We might get one to two inches of snow, though, by the end of the day. So that's always exciting. Uh, just be careful uh, for now. It does look like plows should be out maybe to clear some of that, but it's not piling up on the actual roads, just on the rooftops, the cars, you know. Uh, Here's Julian, as you can tell, where the snow is. And then further along Sunrise Highway, Pine Valley, snow levels dropped about 4,000 feet because of how chilly it is overnight. Uh, checking out where the rain is right now along the border, just south of the border as well, kind of heavy. And then further up north, let's show you where the rain is in El Cajon. It's starting to pick up along the 8, the 67, Santee, it's raining, the 125 right now. Uh, it looks like towards Lemon Grove, it's likely going your way. We're seeing it move from the east, uh, kind of to the south and west. So so that's the direction these cells have been popping up in. Overall, this is the bigger picture where you'll see that moisture. Of course, it's coming in from the east where that low pressure is. This was the one we were watching all week and each afternoon, even tomorrow, we could still see a chance of thunderstorms. We got the hail yesterday uh, and that might happen yet again today with all this moisture. A lot of it wrapping around the mountain ranges and just staying put, but it has been nudging uh, further west of our mountains as well. It's chilly this morning. 47 Poway, 48 Nescondido. 50 Del Mar, 53 downtown. You're only going to reach 64 today for downtown, 64 in Carlsbad. And then throughout the afternoon, don't rule out the chance of rain. Later tonight, we will likely see some more rain in the mountains, possibly uh, beyond that. But then by the weekend, the coast inland valleys should be nice and dry. You're warming up next week, Monday, Tuesday, just in time for spring to begin. And a look at traffic for now. It does not look like we have uh, any chain controls or anything like that in our mountains. Although, as Eric mentioned earlier, Earlier. schools uh, will be uh, there's a snow day for them in the higher elevations because of just the unsafe conditions. So just keep that in mind if you do want to go look at the snow. No crashes on any of our freeways. Let's show you the border wait times from Customs Border Protection. Right now it takes 115 minutes to go through the general line at the San Ysidro Port of Entry. 75 minutes for the line at the Otay Mesa Port of Entry. Eric. Still ahead, a local community is being warned about a sexually violent predator moving in. Plus, where local residents say there's way too many short-term vacation rentals and deadly storms ripping through the Midwest overnight.